Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, I feel so honored to have so many people that I just know and love out in the congregation. As many of you know, I was called to the Salt Lake City West Spanish-speaking mission. And if I'm going to be honest, that wasn't my first choice <laughs> in a place to serve. But I guess the Lord works in mysterious ways. I've been doing home MTC for about one week now, and it has been a lot. <laughs> Um, I looked on my schedule the day before I started, and it said, arise at 6.30 uh, Central Time. So I'm like, okay, 4.30, that's not so bad. <laughs> so every morning, I wake up at, I try and wake up at 4.30, more like 4.45, I guess. And uh, I get to go to the gym with Lizzie, I mean, uh, Sister Cannon. And it's really funny, the other day we were at the gym, and this guy walks up to us, and he's like, Oh, hey, sisters, like, what ward are you guys in? Like, oh, we're in the Bridges Ward, we're doing Home MTC. And I don't think he knew what Home MTC was because he was like, okay, so like, the ward is giving you lifetime memberships? And we're like, <laughs> and we're like, no, we're just like, we actually live here in Vegas. And he's like, oh, okay, you guys live here because you're serving here. And then you just walked away. You're like, yes, yes, that's correct. Um, but after going to the gym with Sister Cannon, we, I have a companion study, and then I do three hours of language class, a workshop, and then I have a two-hour break, which is probably the shortest two hours of my life, and uh, usually my mom will like take me to lunch, and she has to make sure that every random stranger that we come across, she introduced me, this is Hedmana Henson. <laughs> you have to change the day to an H, but I don't know. I guess I can't do that, but she <laughs> um, after my lunch, then I go back into my classes, which is all about missionary life for three hours, and then maybe I'll have a lesson or a devotional, and then by the time my day is completely over, I have an hour of free time before I go to bed at 8.30. So it's been a lot, but it's been really great, and I've felt the spirit so much. Uh, one of my uh, MTC teachers asked me, what have you done to prepare for your mission, or how has the Lord prepared you for your mission? Uh, I thought a lot about that question, and I've been thinking about my mission call and what has gotten me to this point. Last fall, I got the opportunity to do a study abroad in Eastern Europe, specifically Latvia, and it was probably one of the best times of my life. I had never been out of the country, and I was like, oh my gosh, look how much cobblestone there is. There's so much cobblestone, and it was like a kid in a candy shop. Um, I got to spend a whole bunch of time with the missionaries that were there uh, serving in Latvia, and I even got to help them teach the English classes that for the locals. Uh, one day during one church activity, while the missionaries were on their transfer, I met a sister missionary who was living, who was from Ukraine. I was really curious in her life back home, and she opened up to me pretty quickly, and she started telling me about how her life was back at home. And she said that right when she had gone out, and gone out to the mission, Russia invaded Ukraine. And her grandma and her mother passed away in the invasion. And her father had no choice but to enlist in the Ukrainian army, and she doesn't know when she'll ever see her father again. I was so astonished at the fact that she was still out serving her mission, even through all these trials. I thought a lot about the scriptures, and I thought about who in the scriptures have I've had to overcome a lot of trials, and immediately in my mind, I think of Nephi and his story, and how Lehi, being a prophet, told all his sons, okay, we got to pack everything we have, and go into the wilderness. They left behind all the riches and everything, and I know they're a pretty well-off family, and they just had to, you know, go into the wilderness. Um, you can read in the scriptures the different perspectives of Nephi and Laman and Lemuel, and how even though they went through the same exact trials, they had two totally different experiences. It says, And thus Laman and Lemuel, being the eldest, did murmur against their father, and they did murmur because they did not know the dealings of that God who had created them. Just a couple verses down, you can read Nephi's perspective. And, I, and it came to pass that I, Nephi, being exceedingly young, nevertheless, being large in stature, and also having great desires to know the mysteries of God, wherefore I did cry unto the Lord, 
And behold, he did visit me and soften my heart, that I may believe the words which have spoken by my father. Wherefore, I did not rebel against him like unto my brothers. Nephi had a completely different perspective than Laman and Lemuel. He decided to humble himself and put his full faith and trust in the Lord during this hard trial that he had to overcome. I love how it said, and I did cry unto the Lord. The Lord wants us to take our pains to him. He's standing there with open arms, and all we have to do is go to him. I can relate with Nephi, remembering the summer before my senior year. What was he doing? I, I was getting ready for my senior year, which was supposed to be probably the best year of high school, had very quickly turned into the worst. I wasn't looking forward to go to school, and I just felt very, very alone. Some nights, I, I can relate to Nephi, where I had nothing else to do but literally cry unto the Lord. It was at that time when I decided to receive my patriarchal blessing. I felt like my prayers were answered. I looked at life with such a different perspective, knowing that high school is so temporarily compared to the eternity that we have to live. Yeah, I was still going through trials, and they even got harder at some times, but I remembered that God only gives me trials that he knows I can handle, and he gives me the resources I can to overcome them. During that hard time in my life, I remember having many blessings, like my family to support me, and I remember people coming into my life, helping me overcome those trials. Very shortly after, I decided that graduating early would be the best opportunity for me. I was all set to go to USU, have my housing paid and everything, and then I discovered that BYU has really good study abroad programs. So I transferred everything to BYUI, which was not really also my first choice, but I ended up having the best time ever. I was surrounded by a whole bunch of people who had such strong testimonies. I took amazing institute classes that greater my knowledge on the gospel. I even had two, I had one roommate who was a return missionary and three roommates who were actively submitting their papers to be missions. And that just really got me excited for the future. After two semesters at BYUI, I went on my study abroad. And thinking back at the missionary that I met in Latvia, I remember when we were talking, I had to finally ask her why she was even on her mission. I remember her grabbing my shoulders and telling me, Telling me that the trials that I'm going through are maybe the hardest trials I'll ever have to go through in my life, but they're just a dot on the line of all of eternity. Those words made pretty, they just made me, I just wanted to cry in that moment and give her a hug. This missionary was so strong. She said that the best thing she could do was put her full faith and trust in the Lord. And serving and serving a mission would probably be the best way to do that. She said, I have felt God's love through all my trials. And it's amazing to me how sometimes in our darkest hour we can feel God's love the most. President Nelson said, The joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and everything to do with the focus of our lives. This is what I want to give people on my mission. Jesus Christ and his gospel is the perspective that we should all have. None of us will go through this life unscathed. We'll all have trials we have to go through and hills to climb over. But I know that our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, will be there holding our hands the whole entire time. I know that he loves us so, so much, and he knows we might be name, and he knows each and every one of you by name as well. He sent his only begotten son, to come down to this hard, cruel earth and suck and pay for all the sins of everybody that lived, everybody that's living, and everybody that is to live. And that's there's just so much peace in knowing that. And that's what I want to share. I know I maybe when I first got my calling, I wasn't super excited to see Salt Lake City, but I, now I couldn't be happier. I have a different perspective, an eternal perspective. And that's what I want to share while on my mission. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.